everyone, Leslie Cornwell, Midwifery Business Consultation. This next section I want to talk to everyone about is the pros and cons of starting your own midwifery business. Um, I get so many questions of thinking, okay, I'm contemplating it, I currently work for someone else, I currently am comfortable where I'm at, I've thought about starting a business, but it's very overwhelming when you're in the beginning planning process. It's good to know, is this a good fit for your personality, your short-term, long-term goals of where you wanna be in life to start a business? So I put together a list of, I'll start with the cons first because it's a little bit shorter and those are the ones, the negatives people want, always wanna know. They know the positives, the freedom, the control of the decision-making, but the negatives, having those realistic expectations of what a business owner does versus an employer, employee. So the cons, um, you have to have the initial upfront investment. It doesn't directly have to come from your own pocket, but you have to have funding to get your business going. Whether it's a loan from a bank, whether it's a business partner, an investor, um, community donations, there's a lot of ways to get your business started, um, but it does need money. If you go work for someone, you interview, you start, you get a paycheck right away. You don't have to say, okay, you owe me $5,000 to start working at this hospital. It's the opposite direction they usually give you a sign-on bonus to start at the hospital so so that's a mind shift of you have to plan you have to prepare to start a business um, some of the capital startup is small depending on what type of practice a home birth practice has a much smaller startup cost than a birth center practice does um, a hospital practice usually has even less because you're using the supplies and equipment at the hospital to deliveries you just need the things for a prenatal visit um, the other part is the full responsibility. Um, when you're a W-2 employee, you come in, you clock in, you're salaried, um, you don't have to make the decisions. You don't have to train the receptionist. You do not have to, to have a policy that needs to be updated every year. You do not have to attend all the hospital meetings, um, the financial decision making, the marketing, the budget, the um, hiring the doctors that you work with, getting the supplies restocked that need to be done, training the nurses that will support you during the birth. So there's so many aspects in the backdrop that midwives typically take for granted when you're employed. Um, and, and so you have to realize that it is your responsibility to hire the right team, interview, make sure that you're training them appropriately, you have the correct policies in place, um, you have the correct resources for everybody to do their job and make sure it's being updated accordingly. So that is ultimately, and not to say you have to do it all yourself, but you're the ultimate responsibility to it all. You can hire the, the mastermind team, you can hire an office manager, you can hire a medical assistant, you can hire nurses, educators, marketers, billers, the people that can delegate those things. You don't. I didn't say you were the one that directly had to do it all. You're the one that's ultimately responsible being the business owner. So the example I I give is if you get a frustrated um, a woman with your colleague at the hospital you don't have to worry about it there's no responsibility for you that goes to the office manager and that's the hospital's responsibility if it's your own private practice and a client is frustrated with care or has some concerns she wants to discuss the business owner is ultimately the one um, if the if it's not resolved with the office manager so just being aware of that responsibility difference um, you are available 24 seven for your business, depending on the structure, if it's for call for birth. Um, if you have a team, even if you have a team, if you're the birth center and the plumbing's not working, the lights aren't working, there's a storm coming, you're still available to help solve those challenges and problems that there may not be a policy and protocol for. Um, sometimes it's just a simple phone call with a question, clarification, but just making you aware that when you're the business owner and there's something new that comes up, you're the one they typically go to. Um, so if it's not so much as for birth, um, and it's not time sensitive clinical care, so if you're doing a consultation services, they'll send you an email and you can answer it on your own time. It's usually not like a, okay, I need an answer now attitudes, but you are still totally available. If something's going on with the business, you get a call for something that needs to be taken care of right away, that's you. Um, the business learning curve. So when you are training as a midwife, we learn so much about pathophysiology, uh, learn about uh, medical terminology, uh, gynecological services. We learn so much about women's healthcare 
that most schools do not give much for courses on business. So running a business is a learning curve. When you start a job, they don't say, okay, you need to understand how we market our practice. You just are expected to do one subset piece of the bigger business assembly line. So you're expected to be your scope as a midwife. So when you're a business owner, there is a learning curve. You want to take business courses. You want to take financial courses. You want to plan and prep and make a good foundation for your business. And that takes time. And there's a reason that most businesses the first five years fail. It has nothing to do with the drive and the passion. It's that learning curve. Um, I have ran multiple businesses. Some are good and some are bad, but that's part of the learning curve. You grow, you learn from your mistakes, getting past that myth that mistakes are a bad thing. Mistakes help you learn and grow and improve. Um, so my goal with Midwifery Business Consultation is to help you with that learning curve, give you resources, templates, tools, so that there's a many things you're not learning the hard way and making mistakes, but you can learn from other people and what resources are out there to help with that. So let's go to the positives of running a business. I love running businesses. I've worked for other people before and it's fine. Um, there's a reason I tend to do independent contracting versus a W-2 status. When I work for people, there's tax purposes to it, but it also it increases my autonomy. I get to choose my terms of what I'm working, what I'm doing for them, and what I want to be part of that service versus if you're hired as a salary and a scope, they kind of can change. Well, you, you you interviewed and this is what you were told, but three months later, the structure changed. There's a partner that left abruptly. Your call schedule's completely changed. You don't have as much control when you work with somebody else of what your hours and your, your work's gonna look like. So when you start your own business, you get to choose your goal, your passion, your, your mission. If you're frustrated with a practice model at the hospital, it goes through a lot of steps before it's changed. When it's your own private practice, you have a staff meeting and it's changed next week. It's a smaller entity. You have more control of what's a priority. You can order the supplies you want. You can hire the team you want. Maybe you're in a large practice and you're not a big fan of a couple of the colleagues you have. You can't do much about it being a W-2 employee working for that organization. When you are the business owner, you create your phenomenal staff team. You interview them, you decide who you get to work with. Um, you decide the structure, you get to decide what you get to charge, you get to decide. I loved it when a payment plan, I could decide what the payment plan would look like. I could decide what insurance companies we would accept. I could decide what's, what, um, um, cultural background and what community I would like to serve with my business. So those are really rewarding aspects of running your own practice. Um, the other big perk that people usually don't talk about, um, when you run your own business, you, you can make a lot more money than if you work for somebody else. Um, you're exchanging your time to somebody else for a salary, an hourly rate, and you're getting paid. So if you stop working, you stop getting paid. With a business, you can decide the sky is the limit how much money you wanna make. You can grow and expand, you can add additional offices, you can create a birth center franchise. You have no glass ceiling about what kind of potential income you would like to make. If the money is not the main driving force, which most midwives it's not, it's good to know, am I gonna get the same competitive lifestyle that I had with my prior position, is it going to improve? Am I gonna work more hours? You have to know your um, budgets and you have to know your fee schedule and the competition. That's part of that market analysis to determine what is the value you're creating. Um, so that's why I love my online education because I can meet so many more needs with the internet and the access across the world to my resources. I spend time in front of a camera expressing my knowledge, my skills, my suggestions to midwives and it, it, it goes unlimited of the potential with it. So. There's a lot of amazing things with running your own business. Um, there's definitely pros and cons compared to a typical W-2 job. The one that always makes me laugh the most is when people say, well, I have more security at my W-2 job. When I work for somebody else, I have a secure position. I have a, a pension they're contributing to. I'm gonna retire from there. And I just, 
I see too many midwives that are comfortable and don't realize that that practice may close next week, that um, they may restructure if a hospital healthcare is really running tight on their budgets. And if they have a resident, um, a resident school come into the area or the physicians say, well, I'm in house, I'll just do the deliveries for the midwife team anyways, th they can restructure things easily. So I really stress that having that illusion of job security, you just don't know for sure that it'll always be there. I hear too many hard stories of unplanned, letting go, no good reasons, just a restructuring of the business model. Um, so having your own business private practice, you make the decisions of your security. You're the one that decides, is it profitable, is it not profitable? You're the one that makes the decisions of how successful you're gonna be, not the bigger organization you're working for. So those are the big tips I have about pros and cons of running your own midway free business. I'd love to have people put in the comments um, down below their suggestions of what they found pros and cons of running their own practice and helping to support each other as midwives. Thank you.